Now, let's turn to Iran. At least 30 people are known to have been killed in protests in Iran. This is over the death of a young woman in the custody of the country's so-called morality police. Protests have now spread to more than 80 cities and towns. Demonstrators have rejected the police's claim that Mahsa Amini had suffered sudden heart failure. Iran's President Ibrahim Raisi has insisted that a thorough investigation is underway into the death of the 22-year-old who'd been arrested allegedly for wearing a hijab headscarf in an improper way. Well, we can speak live to Roya Hakarkian, who is a writer. And Roya, you testified before the U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee about what is happening in Iran. You were testifying just a few days ago. I wonder what was your message to them, given what we are seeing on the streets of Iran, the protests there, and also globally as well? Um, thank you for having me on. Um, the, my message was that um, the very thing that the West, the United States, Europe, um, the rest of the democratic-minded world had ever wanted to see happen in the Middle East is happening in Iran. Why is no one responding? This is the continuation of the feminist movement unfolding in Iran that began a hundred or so years ago uh, here in the West. And women in Iran are asking for choice, are asking for the freedom and egalitarian values that, uh, you know, the West has stood for and it has tried to cultivate in the rest of the world. Well, they've taken to the streets and they're demanding th those very values. Where is um, Europe? Where is the United States? Why do they continue negotiating with Iran at a moment when uh, you know, the morality police, the, the uh, revolutionary guards are cracking down and arresting and imprisoning the protesters and have shut down the Internet. Why does that go on? And that was my message to the Senate, that, that I think if we fail to support these protesters, if we fail to support these women, then we're practically saying that uh, democracy belongs to the West and everybody else in the world can continue to live in darkness. Roya, what kind of feeling do you get? Because we know that the United States is amongst those countries that is wanting an investigation, independent investigation. I mean, is that seriously going to make any impact whatsoever on Iran itself? Not least given that you've got President Raisi calling on Christian Amanpour to wear a, a head covering in New York to do an interview. Right, precisely. I mean... Um, an investigation, will that make a difference? No. I, there are CT scans of Mahsa Amini's uh, skull that have been leaked out that show fractures to her skull. How many 22-year-olds uh, suffer from heart attacks in this world who are perfectly healthy prior to it? Um, uh, what I'm trying to say is the West can no longer afford to, to have double standards when when it comes to treating, you know, its own neighbors and, and its own other fellow Western nations and, and have a set of different standards when it comes to dealing, you know, with folks in the Middle East and, and uh, countries beyond you know, sort of the uh, Western borders. Iranians are out on the streets. Iranian women are not burning American flags. They're burning their hijabs. They're asking to be treated as equal citizens. They're asking to have the right to dress as they wish. These are the fundamental, the pillars of the kind of democracy that the West has been trying to promote everywhere in the world. And, and it has taken root in Iran. To continue to hold negotiations with the people who are killing 22-year-olds out on the streets, who are cracking down on protesters, is to deliver a message to the Iranians that we have no regard for your aspirations, we have no regard for your women, we have no regard for your youth who are being killed uh, for no reason other than a few strands of hair showing from under the veil, um, and we will carry on with our negotiations regardless of what's happening to you. That is how the roots of hostilities that, that the West has always wanted to see uh, uh, abolish in, in the Middle East um, take shape. You want those people to love you. You have to stand by them in their hour of need. 
Roya, we hear your message loud and clear. Thank you very much for speaking to us. The writer, Roya Hakakian, who, as I was saying, testified before the U.S. Senate really. Foreign Relations Committee about what we are seeing right now in Iran. Thank you, Roya. Thank you.